बैठने के लिए जगह सही है Yeah, uh, hi, guys. Thank you for joining for today's session. I hope I'm audible. Just let me know if I. Yeah. So we'll just wait for a couple of minutes, and then we'll start the start today's session. So there's just one thing that I would like to say. Uh, uh if if my if if I go off the internet, please do wait for five to ten minutes so that. You know, I can figure out because I'm in a zone with little bit of poor network connectivity. Please wait for five to ten minutes so that I can join. Yeah. So and we can continue with that presentation. Yeah. So. So I thought of starting with the. You know. Uh. With the assignment one discussion of the assignment one, it seems I just checked that it seems uh, the date hasn't uh, the submission date is still on. So last date for submission for assignment one. So I don't think I will be able to discuss that because since we have not uh, gone over the deadline, we can discuss them in the next session. so yeah and i remember someone has asked for where this the meeting videos this meeting session videos will be put on it's there in the nptl web page where it says uh uh online sessions you can access it from there or 
you can access it through this YouTube channel where I will be uploading the videos from all the sessions that that will that will go on that has happened our and will be in for the part, ne next 11 weeks <laughs> okay so yeah just just keep that in mind so yeah before we start someone has asked about uh, what are gravity anomalies so so gravity anomalies as we all know that earth has some sort some amount of gravitational field in it right so with respect to so there are these models which say you know this is the amount of gravitational field that should be there in an area so uh, let's assume uh, earth is a perfect sphere so the then the gravitational force should be uniform like let's say for instance some value some x value it will be x whether you measure let's say in india versus us or europe and if if the earth would have been you know a perfect sphere but thing is earth is not a perfect sphere we have a lot of these geological formations either it is valleys or mountains or oceans so because of these thing these uh geological formations these valley these uh gravitation so gravitational force kind of varies so this also can be put up into the model to predict you know what will be if there's if, if it's, it's there's a mountain versus if there's a valley the gravitational force might slightly change so this this can all be put up into a simple equation and you can predict it like you know like an equation of a line y is equal to mx plus c if the height is this thing you, the, your gravitational force will be something something so somehow that's how it can be done but the thing it's still after even af after accounting for this uh, geological formations on earth there are still anomalies so you get readings that are no way off from the theoretical predictions if the theoretical prediction says 10 units for example randomly but what you are getting is 30 units so it, it is kind of way different than what it's supposed to be right so this is when anomaly it's not what it's supposed to be it's very different from what it was so this this happens generally due to a lot of uh, other factors like for instance uh, if you look at the cross section of the earth it has you know core mantle and crust so if the density of the materials or if, if specific area has some high concentration of some of the metals that are found in these areas then you will obviously have these anomalies because these metals kind of actually contribute to some of those characters uh, so that's why uh, some of those uh, you know mining operations often when they are out for searching these uh, you know mines or uh, the deposits of specific chemical uh, elements in the earth they often tend to look out for these gravity anomalies so you know some some uh, elements tends to push gravitational anomalies into specific site sometimes they might reduce the gravitational than the theoretical prediction sometimes they might just increase because of the varying densities you know that there is that there is this elemental deposition in these areas that's how some of sometimes these gravity anomalies can be used okay I uh, hope uh, that was a little bit clear. Yeah. And yeah, so if you have any, if anybody has any more doubts, we will, I will wait for you guys for a, for a minute or so. And then, uh, if not, I will start, I will go on with discuss some of those concepts that I have thought of touching upon or if you want if you joined uh, little later if you got to know, know that you know that you want to ask something about that please do ask and then if you have any doubts in between please you can raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask or you can use the chat box so, so that I can go through the chat box and then I can watch it and then I can address these questions. Yeah. 
so let me just start my screen share so I hope my screen is visible to everyone yes so yeah yeah thanks for the confirmation and please don't address me sir yeah so yeah let's just start so I will not be covering most of the topics that were covered in uh, you know in the session but I'll try to touch upon some of them uh, so yeah let's just try to keep it interactive so that we know we know what is what some things are yeah I, I think you guys might have heard about this thing Big Bang Theory and not the you know sitcom comedy show American sitcom comedy show the actual science of it can someone say what what it was or the idea behind this theory So yeah, so let me just go ahead since no one is answering. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So, so the concept that we you know the universe is expanding. We all know that you know that the universe is expanding, and then we are kind of moving apart. Has you know? Yes, someone raised a hand. Yeah, can you please, and if you want to talk, you can unmute yourself and then talk, or you can type in the chat box. Okay, so yeah, so Big Bang Theory is a theory that kind of deals with how the universe has originated in itself because you know, uh, there has been a lot of ideas behind you know how how life form how the universe itself came into existence and all so over the past few centuries things have been going on and then people were trying to discover have been trying to work on this idea to try to understand you know how the universe has formed so as things were they were working on they found that you know actually we the universe is actually expanding because they they measured Yes, as it talks about the origin of planets, but not only the planets, it's it's majorly for the universe. So when they were they, they found out, you know, that the universe is actually expanding, right? So for some for anything to be able to expand, it has to start from a single origin, single point of origin, right? Then only we so we can say that when everything was close together, then only we can say that it was expanding right now we know that it is expanding from different sort of observations by you know by the or movement of galaxies or other ways we know that everything was together at once right so that's how according to the recent you know theory this theory that you know that everything the universe was everything was together and then everything started expanding and then someone coined this term big bang to to you know to keep it everything together so kind of you know to be able to be so that other people can easily understand the term big bang stuck because everyone it was so catchy everyone is able to you know get hang get and hang up hang with that so so this theory was majorly you know kept forward you know proposed by you know George's Lemaitre 
so it says that you know so there was this huge bang from which you know the origin everything started and then there is this period of inflation that happened and then this when uh the universe started actually expanding after that so this is this all happened uh, and then nuclear fusion begins this all happened within 0.01 seconds of the big bang and then up to 3 minutes then the nu- nuclear fusion ends we'll come to what is fusion and fission slightly little later but you know after 13.8 billion years of when this huge big ba- bang ha- big bang happened and then the universe started expanding that's how the current modern universe actually looks like and then so how did you know the, how did we got to know that you know these are the things that has happened so we often look at gravitational waves they kind of imprint uh how some of these exp- uh, some of these characters happen so you often look at this huge telescopes so this use ra- antennal you know uh dishes in 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 this very remote areas where you know they try to detect these anomalies in gravitational waves and try to figure out where it is coming from and what it could be so they they use this some of these things to figure out you know what has would have happened in the earlier times when this big bang actually happened okay so since i just talked about earlier nuclear fusion and fission can yeah can someone say what what what, what is the dif- major difference between fusion and fission then how it would be helpful for us you know we know that you know both of it generate some sort of energy but what is the major difference between them yeah fission splits a heavy metal into fragments while fusion joins two light elements forming a heavier element yes so both of them the, the common thing between these two things is that it happens between the nuclei of the you know interacting atoms and then when this actually happens it releases a huge amount of energy fusion actually releases more amount of energy than fission uh so how to remember you know fission binary fission right it kind of it talks about you know splitting up of one organism into two organisms one right like the classic example of amoeba so if you remember that fission is kind of splitting fusion is like you kind of fuse two different atoms together uh yeah that's what it is so for instance fusion uh two lighter at- atoms like deuterium and tritium tritium these are when these are fused together they release huge amount of energy they release a new neut- they form there is a formation of neutron and then helium so this process happens majorly in the sun in our solar system and then generates huge amount of energy while fission involves where you know you bombard an atom with a neutron so that it leads to breaking up of the atom into much more simpler particles where is the the atom is broken into smaller fragments so this is commonly used in you know nuclear reactors for generation of you know nuclear energy so if you look between these two process we generally use fission for you know for most of our nuclear energy but fusion is hardly used because there of there are multiple uh challenges that we face generally because one thing is that you know it's pretty hard to control the reaction progress in fusion but fission is relatively easily controllable but still yeah we we are trying to uh look out for fusion because fusion is kind of much more safe it, it the byproducts are much more safe if you look at helium it's a gas and and then while 
the byproducts of a fission are usually radioactive byproducts which have its own you know effects on the earth or the people that are staying close to them so some these, these two factors yeah so yeah we all know that you know during this process yeah earth has formed and then if you look at the cross section of earth during the formation of earth if you remember from the lectures you know or if you have learned it from somewhere else also that earth has these three layers major three layers the core the mantle and the crust right the, it was not the, not the case when the earth has formed initially everything was you know solid ball of solid molten mass that was that used to you know go around the sun but as the earth started cooling down the top layer you know form the, the top layer what we call crust has has cooled considerably and the mantle is slightly hot and then the core is the solid inner mass which is you know which is mostly liquid and a combination of solid so that crust is what we call uh, the lithosphere. Crust in most of the upper mantle, which is kind of solid, is what we call the lithosphere. And this is where we actually stay in, or you know, stay on, right? And the thickness of these generally vary from place to place. Like for instance, in the oceans the crust tends to be slightly less thicker than compared to the continents and then there is a regular flow of these materials that that often happens within the earth itself so as the earth was you know forming uh, uh, it was a hot mass right and then it did it doesn't it it used to have very few elements like you know nitrogen carbon ammonia methane and water vapor so which used to be uh which which was a kind of reducing atmosphere which which used to give the earth a reducing atmosphere this kind of uh reducing atmosphere is actually was very really helpful in the formation of the life and as it has progressed slowly uh, because of life like you know photosynthetic organisms as the photosynthetic organisms evolved and they started utilizing most of the carbon dioxide and then started pumping the oxygen that they are making into the atmosphere uh, we saw a very high decrease in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and then this reduction in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere actually led to further cooling of the earth and then further habit further you know colonization of organisms because they it became a positive feedback loop because you know carbon dioxide being a greenhouse gas captures a lot of temperature right it heats up the environment considerably when we reduce the amount of carbon dioxide it actually cools down temperature and yeah that's how most of the earth would have cooled down later on as the time have time progress and then currently we have you know 21 percent of o2 roughly and carbon dioxide is zero point used to be 0 0.03 percent and then it would have it, it it is rising up because of human activities and during the reducing atmosphere there used to be a lot of h2 right and then this lot of h2 uh used reacted with the atmosphere and then that led to formation of most of the water in in the atmosphere that we have or else earlier the, there were there used to be hardly any water and then as the temperatures of the earth have also cooled down much of the water vapor that we used to have uh in the atmosphere actually cooled down and then formed into the what we see 
as oceans today. Right? And we all know that, you know, these things happen, you know, for certain years ago versus, you know, this thing happened certain million years ago, certain thousand years ago. So we often say that, you know, this period, like say, for instance, Jurassic period was some some certain million years ago. So how do we know all of these things? So we use, we use this concept of called dating, right? Uh, where we, know, we try to fi figure out what the what would be the time period a certain event would have happened and then this kind of kind of helps us try to you know put everything in a streamline and then try to understand the events that has happened from the origin or from certain time period so there are multiple uh, dating thing we do but there are multiple ways of dating we do and what the one of the famous thing that we heard and we often do is carbon dating okay so it uses the concept that you know most of uh, the atoms are not stable right they kind of go undergo a decay so we use that concept and then we know that the rate of decay of certain atoms so for instance, car carbon has so and so decay time, and then we we have figured it out with studies that you know, carbon there's this curve, the what is the time it takes for the amount of carbon radioactive carbon to actually go down to this level, and once we plug in the values of the carbon, we can actually put back the time and see where it could have happened. Right, so the idea behind here is that. 14 and owing to radiation is converted to 14 C which basically nitrogen to carbon this is radioactive carbon when it is actually intaken by carbon uh, plants and they when they photosynthesize and when it is consumed by organisms it keeps on con consuming and accumulating uh, new and new 14 C but as the organism dies there is no further intake of this uh, radioactive carbon so what happens is uh, there is no new addition carbon and then this keeps on decaying and when at certain time period when you find the bones or you know teeth of the certain organism what you do is you actually f find the 14c content of that specific part then you know that you know it has decayed this much then the time period was you know 100 years ago or 10,000 years ago. That's how we kind of date it. But however, it may not be feasible for all, for most of the time to do carbon dating because there is certain time period after which you actually can't figure out, you know, uh, the minute differences. So you, you have to use, uh, you have to rely on other type of techniques. Uh, there is uranium dating also that you do heavy elements that are or some other elements that are found in you know the animal bodies be it, be it plant, plants or animals and then we use those to date or the other thing the other most commonly used is the relative dating which you might have seen in the uh, sessions being discussed so in relative date, dating kind of you know it kind of the idea is that you know the age time period of certain areas and then you try to see that compare it with other known time period where you don't know and then try to figure out what age period it could have been from right yeah So, you guys have anything as of now? Okay. 
so just remind if you have any other questions from the session or previous uh, for the classes please do ask because this is this session is majorly meant for those discussions or be happy to have the discussion with you and also discuss some of these concepts that i thought of right and one of and, and one of the major features of earth are mountains and along with mountains are these curious things volcanoes so if you look at this map of volcanoes it looks so amazing so they are distributed across the world at least in most of the regions and some regions actually don't have volcanoes at all right And some regions are, you know, actually filled up with volcanoes. Right, if you can see in North America, West Coast, or the Japan, East Coast. So, so these are these are one of the features that we prominent features that we see on Earth, and they're different type of volcanoes. Uh, they're basically classified based on uh, the type of magma or the lava that actually comes out so when it was is inside the ma volcano it's actually called magma because it's part of that when once it comes out it is referred to as lava but the composition is mostly the same it just the thing inside versus out so fissure volcanoes are basically you know two different it's it they actually are formed at where at the junction of mostly two plates or where two tectonic plates kind of rub each other and shield volcano they have gentle slopes and then they have this nice vent that comes up and similarly dome volcano they have this nice dome that has formed in formed inside uh, from where you know the lava actually comes on the vent so the different types of these volcanoes are formed uh, based on the type of the magma also and then the type of cooling it has gone while right yeah so this these were already discussed but just this just the representation on how these actually looks like and then some of these volcanoes when they go actually dormant like for instance this caldera volcano types when they actually go dormant, they actually form a unique ecosystem within, within the cone itself, the crater that is actually formed inside. They form their own ecosystems and there are a lot of examples of, of those ecosystems. I don't exactly remember, but I think the, at least in one, one such volcano is in Southeast Asia where there is a, uh, a whole ecosystem, different ecosystem within the volcano itself. There's this huge lake, there's this nice, you know, rainforest like habitat inside. So maybe you guys can check it out later on. Yeah. So, uh, so they, they, so they, in the Pacific Ocean, where these, there's this thing called Pacific Ring of Fire. It's basically nothing but string of volcanoes. Most of these are active volcanoes that are, that are, you know, that kind of in a circular pattern and then it's around the Pacific Ocean. So it's called a Pacific Ring of Fire. This, this happens because most of these volcanoes are formed uh, along the margins of uh, this tectonic plates where a lot of these tectonic plates are actually moving. And then this move movement causes a lot of these volcanoes to form and then to spew out lava. Right? Yeah. So since I was talking about tectonic plates, so yeah, let's just yeah, can someone say what is a tectonic plate before I go a little ahead? Because I've been saying it for a lot long time, but if someone can say What do you think is a tectonic plate?
so what do you guys just in case if you missed the question what do you guys think is a tectonic plate so what what is the first thing that comes to you when you hear the concept tectonic plate okay uh since it seems nobody is answering so let me just slightly go ahead and uh hear out what what i think is a tectonic plate so the thing is keep we all know that you know we have this nice crust and then mantle and all so most of this thing is not unif uh it's not a single encrusted uh layer the crust is not a single layer and then it can't be a single layer because you know the mantle and mantle has actually the movements the magma actually inside the earth kind of moves they are there are these currents that actually happens right so because of that the crust is kind of broken it's not a broken in terms of visibly bro broken but in most of the places it forms these uh areas right so that those one such area which you know you can clearly make out the margins because of different type of uh reveal top markings so yeah that so the, the, it's the region of the earth's crust or the lithosphere that is kind of separated from each other and then moves kind of on its own based on the currents right so each plate can move differently someone said flood or earthquake will happen when tectonic plates hit together yes uh earthquakes happen most of the time when tectonic plates actually collide with each other so do volcanic eruptions floods might not happen in all of the cases but floods can happen when these tectonic plates collide uh actually when the collision happens when they are in a, you know very very large water bodies like you know uh near, close to the oceans if there is a tectonic plate and then there can be an inundation of water that can come in uh so yeah so there are different types of movement that can happen so there is a rubbing movement so one plate can be going in one direction the other plate will be going in another direction that that yeah and then other the play plates can two plates can be actually going away from each other and the third instance the two plates can actually you know go into each other so when the plates actually go away from each other so it kind of you know uh if you can see here uh, it kind of the magma kind of rises above and then there is a expansion of uh spreading of the plate that happens so most of the times this tends to happen in the oceans leading to you know ocean spreading and ridges formation and all but it also happen uh on the continent also when it happens we call those rift zones and the valley that is formed when two plates that actually move apart is called rift valleys and there are a lot of examples of rift valleys i uh, will just go into that little later on. and then and then when two plates plates actually collide with each other uh because there is a huge force and this is not like a one time event it just keep on crashing into each other either when this happens either one one plate will go down below the other plate and the other will rise up above it so the plate that goes down is called a subducting plate that goes down and then it kind of because the the earth inside is hotter it kind of melts down and then again becomes a part of the core or the magma mantle right uh, similarly the one the, and then 
that's how some mountain ranges also forms when these two plates actually collides and then yeah so since we are talking about the rift valley just before we go to the rift valley i'll just show uh, about what does how does the san andreas fault line look so san andreas fault line looks is because of the uh, you know rubbing of these two plates so in north america and then this zone is prone to huge amount of earthquakes and if i remember correctly they have also made a hollywood movie about the same name san andreas so yeah so this region is prone to earthquakes because these two plates are actually ru act actively rubbing close to each other and then rift valley is when plate actually deep, you know spreads apart it can be a single plate or it can be two plates and then when they keep spreading upon apart they it kind of creates a valley and then that valley uh can actually you know form and it, it can you know diverge for instance african rift valley uh is actually currently sp spreading apart and then the somewhat mid stages is you know red sea which is you know uh ha the landmass have actually gone apart and then there is a ocean uh, you know sea that has come upon come in the bit in between and then for instance atlantic so the mid ocean atlantic ridge has formed after the you know rift of the african and the south american continent and then there is this mid oceanic ridge that often form when these rifts occur so the ridge is where the actually the rift actually started and yeah uh, if you look at the pictures of african rift valley or the rift valley in kenya the picture they are, it looks so beautiful but uh, you know it's actually kind of spreading out apart right and then there are these things called trenches so trenches are usually formed when there is a subduction plate and then that leads to in a depression in the in in the ocean floor and then one of the famous trench is the mariana trench i am not i think it's in pacific it's the deepest it's more than 10 kilometers deep uh from the surface of the ocean ocean so so this this all happens because of the tectonic plate movement so if you look at the different tectonic plates the major tectonic plates you can think of you know north american south american antarctic pacific indo in australian sometimes indian plate is considered separate the arabian eurasian and all right and then nazca plate also so a uh, lot of these plates are moving in different directions if you look at here uh, the indian plate is actually going into the eurasian plate while uh, you know nazca plate and pacific plate are actually spreading apart similarly uh, the south american plate and african plate have been spreading apart for millions of years and that's how we know that you know these two continents have separated and this is the mid atlantic ridge so these are the plate boundaries that actually are as you can see now right and yeah so because of this tectonic plate movements we have volcanic eruptions and then we have earthquake zones and india is no strange to earthquakes right we have 
the tragedy that has happened in Gujarat, you know, a couple of decades ago, the Bhuj, which which is a which is also a earthquake prone zone, and then we have we have been reading, we might have been reading news about our neighbor country, the Nepal, which is a part of, which is uh, a country in the Himalayas. Uh, that experience a lot of you know uh, earthquakes uh, every year right and then some of those earthquake tremors are actually felt in most of our north indian st- uh, states also so because these are all happens because these are uh, on the regions with this active plate movements like for instance the indian plate and the eurasian plate are actually colliding uh in this region right similarly uh, if you look at the san andreas fault line is somewhere around here and then there are a lot of earthquakes there so does in this region the japan as we all know that you know japan is a country that is prone to earthquakes at least and then so is taiwan that is very close in that region and the infrastructure they do build is resistant to you know they keep earthquakes in mind and then build their infrastructure but uh, yeah so there's nothing they can do about preventing an earthquake in those areas because it is the work of the plates and then in india if you look at the regions uh, according to a good government you know uh, that has mapped down these regions we have gujarat around the bhuj area which is very high risk zone and then most of the greater himalayan region and then much of the northeastern india are you know very are in the high very high risk zone because this this these are the regions that are actually in the transition of the indian plate and eurasian plate heating but if you go to ladakh and all they are on the other side of that transition region but still they also experience same level of risk so yeah about 59% of the land area of india is prone to seismic hazard and then the damages that ensure after after an earthquake right so these are all the things that are happening because of the movement of plates and then this movement of plates ha- actually kind of help us understand the formation of continents uh the way they are right uh, and it has come into support of this theory called continental drift i think you guys you might have heard of it so yeah let's just pause for a minute and then see what what do you guys know about this theory of continental drift and uh, how their origins were there is only one continent in the beginning yes anybody else i think abin should be typing yeah uh, there is a single landmass called pangea yeah and then what uh, it split apart gradually to form continents we know today uh, yes uh, one water body called pantalesia yeah uh, yeah glad you pointed about the water body because we most of the time forget about the water body because we are talking about continents so we'll just stick with continents yeah 
so yeah so this idea was proposed by this german meteorologist alfred wegener so he has looked up on previous work and ideas and then if you so of these people you know that who have actually map mapped much of the world when people were actually looking one of those person i don't remember the exact name but when they looked at the map of you know africa african continent and the south america so it seems like it's a perfect jigsaw puzzle that can fit into each other with you know lot of these uh, boundaries so that kind of intrigued uh, him into further research you know kind of saying that you know they, they could have been together and uh, alfred wegener you know took a step better and kind of proposed this theory that you know there there used to be a single landmass called uh, pangaea that used to you know be around the equator and then that kind of split up into two further landmasses called uh, laurasia which consist of current day uh, the europe and north american parts and then the remaining uh, south america of america africa indian and australia all other things as gondwana and then which later on, later on split with the movement of plates which later on split and then there is a there was a gradual movement of you know these coordinates towards the northern hemisphere right if you can see earlier there is to be concentrated around the equator in the southern hemisphere but later on after the gondwana also split up it kind of uh moved north and then now most of the landmass if you see the continents are on the south of the equator sorry north of the equator and very little on the south of the equator right so this was proposed by wagner but uh, his idea was not received well because you know uh, there is nothing much to support him support it but later on when the idea of plate tectonics was proposed and then this actually kind of you know bring back the idea of continental drift into you know ahead saying that you know the plate movements could have actually uh made this continents drift apart which which is what you know we think is uh we think is the current thing that holds now these days right so just a quick animation of how it used to look like so before the formation of pangaea also yeah when the all continents were together then they actually started breaking apart somewhere around 100 million years ago so just this is a timeline if you if anybody is interested in time period million years ago so this is in french because i couldn't find a animation that was in english so yeah so around 300 million years ago everything was together but around 200 million years ago 150 million years ago the north the american and eurasian continents were separated gondwan and laurasia and then 100 million years ago all the continents uh that we see except apart from india has separated and then they are currently what they are as of now and then how do we know that you know there's a lot of support for uh, this continental drift from fossil evidences also right uh like for instance uh the fossil of this fern uh glossopteris is found on all of the southern continents you know south america africa india madagascar antarctica and australia that kind of actually suggests you know all of this used to be together when the fern was actually there and similarly cynognathus which is a land reptile it was shared between south africa and america so this 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 is some sort of biological evidence and freshwater reptile this was found in africa and south america <clears throat> saying that you know 
this was actually these were actually connected and so and but uh, there there is geological evidences also that pointed that you know these continents were actually connected earlier like uh, you know deposit of some certain minerals or or some certain geological formations that that actually you know helps us understand these things say so, you know that you know continental drift would have actually might have happened because the these things are just shared between these two regions so then they if they are shared then there has to be have to be you know uh, together at one point time you know in the past so yeah but india is a curious case here so if you look at here india plate was once with the southern uh, the gondwana but uh, later on it start it went on it's currently in the asian plate right because india has moved out right when earlier it was you know connected here if you see the indian landmass in this figure it was connected with the african landmass and then later on it gets connected with it started drifting apart towards the northern latitudes and then it also kind of different uh, splits apart from madagascar and then it continues its journey further north and it ends up colliding in the eurasian plate and then yeah so there are a lot of evidence for how this was connected like there are some species of frog let's say uh, i think uh, nictica batrachus the purple frog that you see in kerala a uh, lot of malayalis might be you know familiar with that frog uh, the other relative of that frog is actually you know found in madagascar similarly the formations there are some for geological formations in the western ghats and then identical geological formations in the eastern parts of madagascar madagascar that actually suggests you know these two were similar or you know were together in some pe time period in the past so yeah and then during the movement it also divided indian landmass actually had to cross all the way from the equator and then it ended up in the eurasian plate so yeah and now the indian plate when it actually went and uh, collided with the eurasian plate it actually started going down so the indian plate is going down under the asian plate so 60 million years ago uh, it was traveling and then there used to be a sea with ocean and then that's what we call as tethys sea and then so this is what it used to look like and then as the pl plate is keep kept on moving it started going down so indian plate is currently below northern part of the indian plate is currently below the the eurasian plate and then this pressure from this region continuously uh, gives rise to the rise of the himalayas the himalayas as we see today right uh but has it stopped no even as of now even today also the indian plate is still moving into the tibetan plate uh, eurasian plate so the himalayas are actually rising constantly uh, every year and then the height of the mount everest in the himalayas is also increasing because uh this plate is actually going inside right yeah so when this thing was happening the sea that was between indian and the asia actually got drained out and the sea was used to be referred as tethys sea and the remains if anybody is interested 
and the fossil remains of much of the uh, organisms can be found in most of the Himalayan regions, ranging from Shivaliks to the Trans Himalayan regions in the Spiti Valley and in Ladakh in some regions. You can find the fossil of ammonites, which used to be the sea, these sea living organisms in the older area, uh, you know, in the past time period. And since this has dried up, and then the plate actually led to the rise of the seabed. Around 4,000 meters, you get to see the fo the fossils of the species because what used to be the bed of the ocean, what used to be the ocean floor is now on top of, it's a, it's a mountain peak now. And then, yeah. So this is how it looks like uh, the aftermath of the collision of uh, the Indian plate with the Asian plate. If you can see the folds here. So this is from Spiti Valley. If anybody want to witness how these geological formations, you can visit it and you get to see these beautiful layers of, you know, seabed that has actually risen up. And then this is in Pin Valley, which is close by. This used to, what used to be the bed is actually standing horizontally because the pressure of one plate push, pushing into another one actually gives rise to these folds and this used to be you know the seabed the tethys seabed in some regions there are a lot of fossil evidence saying that you know this used to be the seabed and most of the region in this trans Himalayan region also you get to witness these uh, seabed rising up along with most of these, uh, you know, this region is actually made up of this loose gravelly material which used to be part of the seabed. Yeah, so, huh. so that, 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 that is owing to the continental drift or the plate tectonic movements. We have the Himalayas and the Himalayan yeah, be beautiful Himalayan states in India we see these days. Yeah, uh, that's all I have. Yeah, anybody has any questions, I would be happy to take them. I had to finish them quickly because I was not sure about the weather here. And then the connectivity. So yeah, today's session was kind of slightly shorter. Because I couldn't even include the assignment questions here. But yeah, we can talk a little more about uh, any of the questions or clarifications we have, which I would be happy to take now. Yeah, guys, please feel free to interact and ask any questions that you have. Uh, anybody because I want to keep this session more like an interactive session because if you just uh, the lectures are already be there recorded lectures 
if it's just water lesion those will be way better because uh, those will be what will be you know if you're planning to take an exam they will be much more helpful and they are also way more informative and then these are kind of the session is kind of problem solving slash doubt clearation if you are some concepts that are not clear and then you're not able to interact you can interact here with me uh, and then we can have a discussion and we can try to understand those concepts a little better and also this is kind of an add-on session where i can provide some other concept uh, you know provide insights of another concept that might not have been covered but are related to each other to what is being covered like this so yeah <coughs> so yeah feel free to ask if you have any questions uh So yeah, so just for those people who might have joined slightly later, uh, I have pinned down the YouTube channel where these recorded videos will be uploaded and the current session, you know, the recording might be uploaded a couple of days slightly later because of uh, issues at, at my end. So yeah. I will wait here for five more minutes uh, and if anybody has any doubts or else we can stop the session but if anybody wants to have any chat regarding the, uh, the syllabus or any concept I'll be happy to discuss it yeah yeah so I'll, I will wait here for another five minutes So do let me know or I will be here only I might turn my video off for a while but yeah if you don't have any doubts that's the end of the session and then if you have any doubts regarding the previous assignments I can discuss because that's the main thing that I will be I would, I would want to discuss from the next session onwards I will be discussing those assignment questions first and then we'll start with the doubts any any clarifications you have and then some of those concepts that I wanted to just talk about Okay, then seems no one has any doubts and then yeah, well, let's call it the day, day and we'll stop here for the session. Thank you everyone for joining and then uh, I would request you guys to keep it interactive so that you know we can take both of us can take a lot from this session. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Abin, do you have something? Yeah, sure. You can unmute yourself and ask if you are comfortable with that or you can type in the chat box. Okay.
ओके आई थिंक द प्रीवियस असाइनमेंट वन डेट इज स्टिल एक्टिव आई थिंक इट्स डेट टिल सेवेंथ अगस्ट द असाइनमेंट वन द फर्स्ट असाइनमेंट just check it it shouldn't be a problem i think because i was just checking it before the start of the session it was there till 7th august so if you want to do the assignment maybe just do it as app as quickly as you can today after the end of this session if possible yeah glad that was helpful चलो देन विल स्टॉप हियर थैंक यू एवरीवन बाय